Today we're going to be building a top drip hydroponic system. This particular system will be geared for four plants, although it can be easily modified to accommodate more plants. For this project, we will need the following items. A 10 gallon reservoir with lid, a two foot by two foot flood tray, half inch black rubber hosing, we need approximately three to four feet, quarter inch barbed connectors, quarter inch spaghetti line also known as drip lines or feed lines, air, an air pump in this case we're going to be using a Dura pump air pump that is rated for 71 gallons per hour. We will also need air tubing uh, approximately 10 feet or less of quarter inch air tubing we will also need an air stone. We are going to be using a six inch air stone. We will also need a water pump. We are going to be using a submersible maxi jet water pump that is rated for approximately 140 gallons per hour. We will also need blue stake drippers. We are going to need four of them. We are going to need uh, four Pargro grow blocks. In this case, we're going to be using the biggie size block. And we're also going to need a PVC irrigation half inch valve. Okay, in this portion of the video, we're going to be talking about drilling uh, holes into our uh, reservoir lid and flood, and flood tray. So now, to, in order to accomplish this, we're going to be using a hole saw. The reservoir uh, lids and flood trays are made of uh, ABS plastic, so it's fairly tough to go through. A hole saw is a drill bit attachment for any that works for any drill. They're fairly inexpensive and can be found at any local hardware store. We're going to be using two uh, different sizes of hole saws, and the reason for that is that we want a larger hole um, in the reservoir lid than we have in the actual flood tray, so that when it overflows, it doesn't leak. Uh, so we're going to start off with a, approximately a three-inch uh, hole saw uh, to cut right through the reservoir lid, and uh, you want to practice uh, safety when doing this. Uh, our suggestion is to put a piece of uh, scrap wood underneath the uh, place that you want to drill your hole in, and the reason for that is it makes it much easier. Uh, so that way, once it, the hole goes through, the the saw has something to stop it. Okay, so we're going to start by preparing the pump. And as we can see, we have a fairly low pressure water pump here. Uh, not, too, not too strong, as our system is not that large. Although you would uh, accommodate for a larger system by using a larger uh, pump. So now that uh, we covered the pump, we're going to go ahead and attach uh, some of this vinyl tubing right here to, to the pump so that it can carry the water from the reservoir into the flood tray. To, to assemble this, uh, to do this step, all we need is a screwdriver. We're going to need a hose end clamp, which can be found at any hardware store. Some sort of cutting device. In this case, we're using a box cutter. And that's about it. So I have a pre-cut uh, piece of tubing here. You want to make sure that the tubing is uh, long enough to, make, to get out of the reservoir and into, towards the flood tray. Then we're going to be attaching a second piece of tubing here. Uh, you want to, uh, even if you measure, you want to cut a little bit above what you actually need, just in case any mistakes are made. You can subtract from it, but you can never add on. So what we're going to do is we're going to attach this tubing to the pump. As you can see, it's a loose fit. That's why we need the hose and clamp. Make sure it's on there nice and tight so that the water pressure is good and the tubing does not get off of the pump. You put the hose and clamp as so, it's on there, and then all you have to do is simply tighten it with a screwdriver using a flathead for this one. Fairly easy and straightforward. As you can see, it's a real, real snug fit. And we are done preparing the pump. 
We have our water pump here. We have put on our little suction cups. That helps it stay to the bottom of your, your reservoir. Go right in and it'll stay put. We take a clear look here at the reservoir. We're going to unwrap the wires, of course. We want to keep electrical wires uh, out. Although this is a submersible water pump, this cord can stay within the liquid. It's okay. I'm going to run these wires out of the pump, out of the reservoir, excuse me. We put our lid back on and that's basically about it. Ideally you want your cords to run through these holes. Or you can put them off the side. This is how our uh, reservoir is going to look. It's pretty much complete at this point. Uh, as you know, here's the cord for the water pump coming out, and here's the air line. Goes right into the air pump, of course. If we lift the lid, what we see is our air stone and our water pump there at the bottom of the reservoir. Okay, so now we have our reservoir portion of the system complete. What we're going to do is we're going to add our flood tray. Here we have our black flood tray with pre-cut holes. We're going to go ahead and set on top of the other holes on the lid of the reservoir. I went ahead and pulled the, uh, the tubing that goes to the pump right through the hole. And the reason we have these two holes here is for drainage. While we're, while we're using the drip system, it's going to put water into this system, into our uh, grow cubes, and then once the grow cubes become saturated, that water is going to drip out from the bottom of those cubes. Because of the way the uh, flood tray here is riveted, that water has nowhere to go but to these uh, indentations which have the two holes in them. And from there, they will drip right back into our reservoir. And then we can recycle the water. What we're going to do now is we're going to attach a second piece of ho hosing to this tube here. We're going to be doing that. We're going to take a pre-cut piece of hosing here. And again, as usual, you want to cut a little bit longer than your, what you need, just in case you need to shorten something. Here what we have is a valve. It opens and closes, a very simple apparatus, and very inexpensive. We're going to go ahead and put this into the tubing here, as so. Just push it in nice and tight. As you can see, it's in there. Horizontal means that the, the gateway is closed. And when it runs parallel to the tube, it means that the gateway is open and allowing for water flow. And this definitely helps in uh, maintenance. Whenever we want to maintain the system, if something goes wrong, we can always shut off the water this way and unplug the tube. And now we don't get water spilling everywhere. We we'll go ahead and take this end of the tube and put that in there. Now they're easily attached and able to shut off and on. Okay. So as you can see, we have added some things to our drip system here. Uh, as you can notice, we have some tubes coming off the end of it, and we have this uh, end over here clamped up. So I'll go over that just quickly. And don't be alarmed, it's not that hard. All we did was we went ahead and we punctured holes into our tubing in four spots, because in this case we want four feeding tubes, because we're going to be doing a four plant system here. If you want to add more, you can add more holes and add more feeding tubes. Less, you do less holes, less feeding tubes. The tubes, as you can see here, are actually a quarter inch spaghetti line. They come in large packs, and you can find them on our website. Uh, and we connect it here with a one quarter inch bar connector. Real simple, they're real small, they look like this. Real easy to use. You put one end of it right into the tube. You poke a hole into the half inch tubing here using anything you want. I use a simple Phillips head screwdriver 
They also have irrigation punches which you can get at any hardware store. Just go ahead and put that right in. Fits in nice and smooth, clicks in, and there you go. I went ahead and did that four times. And then over here, what we did is we went ahead and clamped the end of it so the water doesn't rush over. Okay, and as you can see, we have plugged in the end of our half inch hose. What we went ahead and did was use a half inch hose end clamp. Very simply, we just folded the end of the hose over, pinched it, and put the clamp in place, slid it over, and here's the clamp. Real simple to use. After that, we took a zip tie, slid it over, and secured it tightly. And, that, and, and with that, no water is going to spill over. Okay, so now we have our growing medium. What we're going to be using in this system is a Pargrow grow block. Uh, this is, Pargrow is, uh, is a quicker draining brand of grow block. Um, and this is great for a drip system. It's going to drip the water or nutrient solution in uh, much quicker than a regular grow block. A grow block is basically just a uh, rock wool is another name for them. Uh, and it, what it is is that it's actually wool that's been condensed. Uh, into like a spongy uh, square form that we use here. It's a great growing medium. It's very absorbent. Um, it's nutrient free of course. And uh, just plug our plant right in there and watch it grow. We have four grow blocks here. These are larger sizes. So we can grow a, a fairly decent sized plant. Okay, and as you can see what we did here was we drilled two small holes into the edge of our tray and then we went ahead and zip tied our tube to the hole so it's securely fastened, as you can see. Now it's secured to the side, and uh, that'll make our system much more efficient. Okay, and we see now we have our system completed here. We have our uh, hoses in place. Everything's clamped down nice and secure. The holes have been drilled. We have our grow blocks. Everything is ready to go. We have our uh, our switch here to turn it off and on the uh, flow of the water through the tube here. Uh, everything is looking good. The last step that we want to take here is we want to take these blue drippers. These are spike drippers. And we're going to go ahead and attach them to the ends of our feeding lines and put them right into the grow cubes. Very simple, very straightforward. And the reason we do that is it secures our drippers uh, our drip line is much better and it allows for an even flow of water. And that's it. Our system is now complete. Grow big.